Welcome back to the show. We now return to Marseille, France for sailing action from the 49 and 49er FX World Championships. On to the semi-finals at the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX World Championships as the teams turn on the style going into a climatic day of racing. Four races for each of the men's and women's semi-finals as all eyes are now turned to Marseille to see the top 20 men and women push their boats hard and themselves even harder in the battle for podium places. Preparing in the boat park ahead of racing, it is crucial to check everything on the boat and for the sailors to plug into a winning mindset to deliver their best. In the 49er Gold Fleet, another demanding day of racing, with the unpredictable breeze delivering unpredictable results for the teams as they went head-to-head -head in the intense 20-minute battle around the track. The pace of racing has moved up a gear, one mistake in these short, sharp races and there is little chance to recover. Making a strong start in this semi-final series is crucial to establish the pecking order, but for many today, race finishes at the front of the fleet were followed up with results further back in the pack. Austria's Bilstein and Husel, one of the youngest teams competing, launched their attack with a strong fourth place before gravitating towards the back of the fleet to finish race two in 16th and close the date with an 11th and second to move up to third overall on the leaderboard. Great Britain's Fletcher and Sign, the world number six ranked team, and European champion silver medalists continue to hold firm in the first overall after a solid day. But the gap is narrowing and just two points behind are Denmark's Wara and Lang. The pedigree amongst this fleet is simply the world's best and there is no underestimating the challenge these teams have ahead of them, but consistency is the name of the game. Whilst the breeze across the track was the strongest seen so far here in Marseille, it was very unstable with massive pressure changes and shifts. And the last minute gems of advice from coaches before the race often proved vital to choosing the right tactics and race success. Hansen and Perepski, who showed such stunning form in the opening day, scored a black flag in race two which has dropped them to 10th overall. A similar fate for the reigning world champions, Outeridge and Jensen from Australia, who added the penalty to their totally double-digit scoreline. Four races for the 49er FX Gold Fleet, with much more intense shifts on their course area. The cavernous holes in the wind up the left side of the track made the upwind choice obvious, and the fleet went right. An improvement in form for Denmark's Hansen and Iverson, who only just scraped into the gold fleet yesterday and based on today's results have clearly turned their form around to move up to 7th overall. Inconsistent scorelines for the women as well, with just one team managing to knock out all top 10 results. The world number one pairing of Maloney and Meech from New Zealand, who rock it to the top of the leaderboard. Leaders going into the day, Stayert and Bossard dropped to second on the leaderboard with the Italian pair Conti and Klapcic breathing down their necks, just one point behind in third place. The level of racing in the gold fleet is demanding and the 20-minute races require a clear mind and focus to spot your racetrack and sail a clear course out of trouble. Experience counts and it is no surprise to see some of the sailors who have made the transition from other Olympic classes right up at the front, such as 2012 Olympians Steyert and Conti. The first word is the second uh, regatta for us. Uh, it was hard to, to manage everything and to, to be good on all race and on all uh, bits. Uh, we did what we have to do today and uh, we tried to, to do our best and uh, it was three full good races and the last one was quite more difficult. The penultimate day of racing at the Seiko 49er and 49er FX World Championships in Marseille and the pressure is on for teams striving to advance the top 10 finals. Right on cue, the much anticipated breeze filled in and with four 20-minute races for each fleet, it was time to see the team stretch themselves in more physically challenging conditions on this last day of semi-finals. First to race were the 49er FXs. The world number one Kiwis Maloney and Meech had every intention of keeping hold of their leaders' yellow jerseys but knew the French combo of Steyart and Bassard would be on their tail all the way. 
Stayert carries the experience of a laser radial world championship gold and both 2012 Olympians, the French team have what it takes to win despite still being one of the rookie teams. Perfect start line execution ensured they stayed close to the Kiwis who relish the stronger conditions. A win for the French in race five helped keep them in second overall, but the day belonged to the Kiwis, who continued to count an all top 10 finish scoreline and wrapped up the semi-finals with a win in race eight to advance the finals in pole position. These are the favored conditions for the European champions, Nielsen and Olsen from Denmark, who made their comeback almost complete and move up to fourth overall with three top five results. Italy's Conti and Klapcic struggled in the first two races but got back on track to finish second in races seven and eight and hold on to third overall. The score lines are close, with just 11 points separating the top three, with the medal races deciding the podium. The 49er men were up on the track immediately after, and as the breeze kicked in even harder, there were some problems for a few teams, such as Wara and Lang from Denmark, who finished 14th in race 6. The lighter conditions had aided the lighter weight crews to position themselves at the front of the fleet and advanced to the semi-finals, but crunch timers today tested whether they could perform with the breeze up. Disappointment for series leaders Fletcher and Sine, who tumbled from first at the start of the day to fifth overall by the end, with Austria's Bilstein and Husel also dropping from third to 17th. Not quite their plan. But the day belonged to the Kiwis and Australians, with predictable, noteworthy performances in the breeze. Olympic silver medalists Sperling and Tuke claim the championship lead after three top three finishes. Up from 18th to 7th clamber 2012 Olympic champions and defending world champions Outridge and Jensen from a knockout performance of two wins and a second and third. They were dominant at the downwind legs almost a minute faster than the rest of the fleet. The king of the downwind indicating purple jerseys are rightfully theirs tomorrow. A Kiwi leaderboard 1-2 as Hansen and Perebski return to the top three behind Berling and Tuke, who today proved they have the experience and knowledge to change the game and strike back at the crucial moment. I would like to be leading from the front, uh, you know, from the first day onwards, but like Pete said, we were really happy with how we were going early in the week. Um, our, the points were really close between us and the front guys the whole week, you know, more so than they were in uh, Aarhus and Denmark at the Europeans. So, you know, we sailed really well in the light winds and, uh, you know, really enjoyed it out there today. Lots of breeze and, uh, you know, good to have a good scene. Denmark's 2008 Olympic gold medal helm and 2012 Olympic bronze medal crew, Wara and Lang, also accelerate up the leaderboard to third overall. The stage is set for tomorrow's final day, with three theatre-style races of 10 to 12 minutes and double point scoring determining the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX world champions. The points are extremely close and get set for a thrilling finale in what will be an exciting last day. It all came down to the final day at the Seiko 49er and 49er FX World Championships. A dramatic thunderstorm kept the fleets ashore ahead of the scheduled three medal deciding races. With the storm passed, the breeze stabilized at eight knots. In the 49er men, the day opened with a Kiwi 1-2 leaderboard ahead of the double point medal races and Great Britain's Fletcher and Sine in third. Race one was the gold medal defining moment for Burling and Duke, who claimed the race win and extended their lead, whilst their nearest rivals finished well out of range. A disappointing sixth place in the opening race for defending world champions Outeridge and Jensen virtually eliminated any chance of a podium comeback. Finishing just ahead of them were a Kiwi pair of Hansen and Perebski, with the points margin for silver and bronze closing. France's Dion and Christidis finished in second, which helped to clear their path towards the bronze medal, whilst Fletcher and Sainz's ninth place dropped them off the leaderboard top three, but still in with a podium chance. Two more races, and as teammates Berling and Tuke proved invincible, despite their young years, Hansen and Perebski demonstrated immense maturity in the pressurized short course racing and secured the silver medal with a race win and third place. Francis Dion and Chris Didis wrapped up with a fifth and seventh place to seal the bronze. A great comeback for this pair who took a year out from racing. 
a stunning victory for the Kiwi teams who give inspiration to New Zealand sailors after their America's Cup defeat. Yeah, I mean, all of us here were completely gathered for the boys, you know, or the whole team, at, you know, Emirates Team New Zealand. Uh, and they all sort of realised that the boys gave their best shot and, you know, didn't quite make it, but that's the way racing goes. And for us, it was cool, you know, they, you know, what Team New Zealand did, they sort of put sailing back on the map, which was good for us. And, uh, you know, we've just been going pretty good. You know, Pete and I have been going pretty good this week and it was good to come with a win today. Continuing the Kiwi surge was the team of Maloney and Meech, where leading the fleet and after securing a second finish in the opening race, managed to retain first place with Francis Steyert and Bossard in fifth and holding on to second overall. It couldn't have got any worse for Italy's Conti and Klapcic, who finished last, but at that point still held on to third overall. Dominating the start was critical in the double point scoring 10 minute races. Some real up and down scorelines, with the Kiwis finishing fifth in the second race, whilst Brazil's Grail and Kuhn stepped up to finish in third and advanced to position themselves on equal 94 points with the French and Italians. The stage was set for a nail biting medal deciding race. With the Kiwis guaranteed gold, there were several teams in the battle for silver and bronze. A calculated final race start by the Brazilians at the windward end of the line, with their main rivals to leeward. The fleet headed to the right side of the track, with the Dutch leading around the gate, followed by the French and Germany's Yusok and Lorenz, with Brazil in fourth. Heading downwind, Brazil jived early, keeping to the right of the track and to windward of the French and Germans, and sell their own track to finish in second, exactly what was needed to claim silver, with the French taking bronze. Maloney and Meech secured their place in history to become the first ever 49er FX world champions. It feels good, yeah. I think there was a lot of girls that were like in the hunt the whole time. So it feels good to just be finished and stay on top for the last day. Total domination from the New Zealand teams who won three out of six medals. The award ceremony took place immediately after racing, where the winners received their prizes cheered on by fellow competitors. A memorable event in a range of conditions and a historic moment for skiff sailing with a record-breaking entry list and the inaugural 49er FX World Champions crowned. Thank you for watching.